Hello my soccer universe, let's review the action on the past weekend with longer edits of the footage I've shot for my short videos. One of the bigger stories coming out of the Eredivisie is of course that again an Ajax match had to be postponed due to a police strike in order to get better early retirement conditions which also caused Ajax fans to riot around the police station. So rather dramatic scenes there. Dramatic scenes also in Alkmaar where Alkmaar celebrate their record win. A 9-1 win over Robin van Persie's Heron Vane. Heron Vane were actually good in the game. 2-1 down at halftime. Parrot had scored the go-ahead goal for Alkmaar and then he scores three more within eight minutes between the 48th and the 56th to make the game 5-1 and in the end Herrenwein fell apart a very devastating scoreline on the Saturday before PSV got the job done easily winning 2-0 over Nijmegen making a red card early on in the ninth minute set PSV on their way already then a Luc de Jong penalty shortly after and Hugh Steele in the 16th minute already settled the scoreline while Feyenoord seemingly have forgotten to win in their fourth game of the season they already have their third draw despite a 2-0 lead at Groningen in the 70th minute Pejar gave them the 2-0 lead but then Willemson with two goals in the 81st and in the 91st minute Selv the draw for Groningen newly promoted however well in the table we also had 20 only being held to a 1-1 draw at home to Zwolles more points dropped for a top team from the past season The match of the round in the Bundesliga came already Friday evening with Dortmund beating then league leaders Heidenheim 4-2 in a game where both teams hadn't conceded prior to that game. Well, that changed quickly. Dortmund fully dominating, should have led by a much higher scoreline than the 3-1 at half time. This Heidenheim team always dangerous. It was Marlon Adeyemi giving them a 2 0 lead and Adeyemi re-establishing the 3-1 lead. The Sabitzer goal was then called off for a handball in the build-up instead of being it 4-1. Boynik scored from a penalty spot to keep the game tight but as always Dortmund is going to be the winner. Can converts the penalty himself. Dortmund winning 4-2 should have been higher to be honest. Stuttgart get their first win of the season 3-1 away at Gladbach thanks to a Demirovic brace right after the half. In the first half Undorf had given the lead that was then cancelled out by Alisson Player. In Freiburg we almost saw the goal of the season so far after Boadou had given Bochum a 1-0 lead in the 45th minute in stoppage time from the halfway line Miyoshi tries to roll it into the net how it was saved at the last moment and then it's Adamu the Austrian young striker who scores two within three minutes to give Freiburg a 2-1 win. Leverkusen also get back to winning ways thanks to a 4-1 win at Hoffenheim. Terrier and Boniface had given them already a 2-0 lead. Berisha pulls one back and then almost got an equalizer. However, Boniface was absolutely undeniable in this game. Gets a second one and before that Wirtz converted a penalty. That penalty conversion almost came at the same time as Opendo's penalty for Leipzig against Union Berlin. However, he sees he saved and so Union Berlin get a deserved 0-0 draw in probably the most heat match of the round. Thanks to the Marmouche brace, Frankfurt get their second win of the season, a 2-1 win at Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg just had gotten the equalizer through Riedle Baku when just a few minutes later they give away a penalty that Marmouche then converts in the 82nd minute. And like Darmstadt last season, Holstein Kiel seemed to be absolutely outclassed in this Bundesliga season. They welcomed Bayern Munich and were very good hosts, being 1-0 down after 1 minute, 2-0 after 7 minutes, 3-0 after 13 minutes and it ended with a 6-1 win with Kane scoring three goals in the process. Musiala got the opener and there was a big celebration when Gigovic scored the consolation goal for them in the 82nd minute. I think this will be only a single season for Horstein. The other promoted team St. Pauli also don't look good losing 3-1 at Augsburg and then Bremen get the first win of the season unbeaten this season with a 2-1 at Mainz despite being a man down. They score the winner. Friedel was sent off in 60th and 69th. Kohn gets the winner for them. An eventful Premier League weekend started off with a seemingly easy 3-0 win for United at Southampton. However, nothing is ever so straightforward with United since in the 33rd minute Archer sees his penalty saved by Onana and then two minutes later much maligned the Licht scores the go-ahead goal. Rashford quickly adds a second one and, and then Garnacho adds a third in stoppage time. The result of the weekend though came at Anfield where Liverpool, despite all their dominance, never really looked as convincing. And then it's Callum Hudson-Odoi scoring a winner 
Miller from the edge of the box for Nottingham Forest in the 72nd minute, ending a 55-year wait for Forest to get a win at Anfield. It was also Coach Nuno Espirito Santos' first win at Anfield. Meanwhile, Erling Holland keeps doing what he does best, scoring a brace to overcome an early deficit for Manchester City. Manchester City look very invincible at this moment. Probably the game of the weekend came at Villa Park, where Everton again had a 2-0 lead. However, this time it was more a case of scoring the goals too early. In 27th minute, Calvert-Lewin makes it 2-0. Oli Watkins just 9 minutes later pulls one back. He gets the equals in 58th minute and a brilliant shot by Duran from way outside of the box. Unsavable for Pickford. Turns it around for Villa. Now Everton two losses in a row despite having 2-0 leads. Then on the late game on Saturday in Bournemouth, we had the foulest game, most yellow cards given in a Premier League game ever. The Jerrys lose it thanks to a very late Nkunku goal. However, they had a big chance to take the lead. However, Evan Nielsen sees his penalty saved. On Sunday, of course, all eyes were on the North London derby, which turned out to be a little bit of a stinker or a highly tactical game, if you would like. In the end, it's a Kordek Vukasaka that was headed in Gabriel that wins it for Arsenal, who overall were probably a little bit the more mature team. Spurs just not making the goals at this moment, despite playing pleasantly at times. And behind the big two, City and Arsenal, we have now Newcastle sneaking up into third place, despite being 1-0 down at Wolves at halftime with his 5 man share and Harvey Barnes turning it around. Is Newcastle having another good season? Let's see about that. Sporting are still very much the class of the league in Portugal. This time they go to Aruca, win 3-0. It is Gonçalves opening the scoring, then Gilcares with a penalty, and Trincao in the end all on the score sheet. Meanwhile, Bruno Lars stint at Benfica did not get off to a great start. They were 1-0 down in the first minute, but then Benfica got rolling, winning 4-1 against Santa Clara. Actu Koglo Fiorentina turned the game before the half and then Silva and Di Maria added two more goals for a 4-1 win. Porto stay three points behind Sporting, winning now 2-1 against Farenge. Not a great game, but overall they get the three points. And after winning the derby at Braga, Vitória de Guimarães are also on 12 points, level with Porto, three points behind Sporting. This is a big win for Vitória de Guimarães, who should potentially challenge Braga for this fourth spot in Portugal. They took the lead through Mench in the 52nd, then Mbi got sent off for a headbutt, and just shortly after Ribeiro made it 2-0. If it wasn't for the sheer talent in the Real Madrid squad, we already would anoint Barcelona the new La Liga champions. This time they go to noisy neighbors Girona and spank them 4-1, with Laminia Mal, of course, being the outstanding player, scoring the first two after the break. Omo and Pedri add two more to make it a really emphatic scoreline. Has to be said, a penalty for Girona was called back for I don't know what. Stuani pulls the goal back and then Ferran Torres is sent off for a really stupid red card. Also, more bad news, Olmo who came off with a muscle injury is now out for three to four weeks. But at the moment, Hansi Flick's teams are the team to watch in La Liga. Meanwhile, Villarreal's Yellow Submarine are also off to a good start. They beat Mallorca 2-1 away from home with Ayose Perez scoring the goal in injury time after Mallorca had gone down to 10 men as Lato was sent off. An unexpected great match happened in Barcelona with Espanyol beating Alaves 3-2. This is an Espanyol team that barely has scored any goals in the first few matches of the season. And this time around it's Puado scoring a hat-trick and getting Espanyol a much-needed win. A great story also coming out of Sevilla with Jesus Nava scoring the winner for his beloved Sevilla. 39 years old, just won the Euros. Now he tries to keep Sevilla up and running. Meanwhile, Real Madrid escaped thanks to two penalty goals from Dianueta. Real Sociedad hitting the woodwork four times. In the end, it's two penalty goals by Vinicius Juniors and Kylian Mbappé, who for once was convincing that give Real Madrid a relatively undeserved win. Real Sociedad still not looking quite right. However, this is not the La Real that you know from the past seasons. They lost a lot of players over the summer. Besides Barcelona, probably the team to watch at the moment in La Liga is Celta de Vigo. No team but Barcelona has scored more goals than them. No team but Real Valladolid has conceded more goals than them. They played Real Valladolid, got a 3-1 win and stay 
up near the top of the table. And then of course there's also Atletico Madrid where most of the new signings now scored. Conor Gallagher opened the scoring. Atletico largely outplaying Valencia all over the pitch. Griezmann at second one. Then Julian Alvarez also gets on the score sheet. Keeping Atletico Madrid level on points with Real Madrid and four points behind Barcelona. For Valencia though they sit now bottom of the table. This could be a really really rough season for Ruben Barajas men. But again we expected it last season already. With a comeback win over fellow Champions League participants Brest, PSG make it 4 out of 4, winning 3-1, Ousmane Dembele scoring a brace and Fabian Ruiz adding the 2-1 in between. But Marseille and Monaco keep up with them, also getting wins. OM winning the derby against Nice 2-0 at home with Neil Moppe getting the go-ahead goal for the Marseille and then Luis Enrique with a brilliant shot from outside of the box, making it 2-0. Yes, Cornelius was sent off for a second yellow card, but it was a convincing win for the Marseille on the Deserbi. After that, Adi Hütters Monaco go to Auxerre, also get an easy 3-0 win. Tilo Kerr and Wanderson in the first half already set them on the way for a win and then Zacharias late on seals it. We're also a Ren getting a very convincing 3-0 win over Montpellier with and in a secret top match Stade de Reims go to Nantes and celebrate a comeback win. The winning goal is being scored by former last player Keito Nakamura in stoppage time after being assisted by fellow Japanese Ito. At the same time Toulouse get a 2-0 win over Le Havre. It was their first win of the season and in the evening game Lyon are held to a 0-0 draw at Lens. Gift Orban scoring twice however both of them are offside. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!